Hey everyone, this is episode two where I share how I build my first train depot and get my first underground train running. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to episode 2 of my series of playing OpenCTD. Uh, we'll get straight into it, uh, we're in the game straight away this time and this is where we left off with our tube line. We haven't got any uh, services running on it yet, uh, we created the line from Wimbledon here all the way through Fulham. Ells Court and Paddington, so there's just a reminder of what we're doing. Uh, long term what we'll end up doing is expand this network and um, add more features to it, particularly with this trying to mimic the district line, we'll add more and make it more busy and those sorts of things. But I thought it's episode two, this game is about trains and things, so we will get some trains running on this line before the end of the episode. So, uh, looking back at um, the first video, I was kind of flummoxed why tunnels didn't work. So the tunnels under the water here, between Fulham and the south side of the Thames. Now, playing around with it uh, between the videos, realised that for, uh, for tunnels, so tunnels under the water, you need the water to be at uh, sea level and this water here is not at sea level so you can tell that by over here uh, there is a little increment there in the land height so uh, that's at uh, sea level this isn't so that's why tunnels didn't work so if i could i could put tunnels on this side and uh, this is the open water now this is a river and it's one level up so tunnels won't work but a normal tunnel will so we're, we're gonna change that here and make this a tunnel so we'll do that quickly before we get trains running and um, I'll make it look a little bit nicer so I need to tunnel down twice I guess we don't do it we can just tunnel down once then we're going to be on this side this is the side we need to tunnel down twice so here we're tunneling I'm going across there oh, I needed to remember to myself to change the GRFs of the tunnel entrances and exits it does mean that this section here is slightly different to what I originally planned so what we'll do is we'll actually remove the line here and make it slightly different so we'll make a cutaway here and then go across this way so that gives an option to put a station over here which I would prefer signal type that I want, which is the default signal type. I thought I got some different uh, signal type GRFs on, so hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll see those in action, probably better for longer distance trains. Uh, so you, like, so you can see them here where they go um, amber, two ambers, red and green. So I don't think I need a full path signal at those points. So maybe, and down here I don't need those. So let's take those away again. I'll just go for default block signals. We'll try and
We'll try and stick block signals in where we can, where we need them. So let's fix that. It looks slightly better for my eyes. I don't know if you agree, but um, at least we don't have a bridge going across. What we then needed to do, I think I mentioned last time, was that we would end up doing a, uh, if you want to call it a marshalling yard or a depot on the other side of Wimbledon for where the trains will hold between starting their services on the timetable. So we're going to need to build that. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I think I said didn't we, we're going to try and go three out. So we'll go So we'll, we'll expand the town slightly by three. So I was just making that a three by three grid. So uh, three. We'll demolish that there. To, and again, once we start playing, my expectation is that these will be uh, converted into kind of these. Uh, what do you call it? The, um, the kind of tarmac road rather than concrete roads. So that should fix itself. We'll build a few just to give it a helping hand to start with. So that's three out. We might want to put a signal on here. And a signal through the tunnels. So we can do that here. Do the same over here. So we'll go down So we'll tunnel through here, and this is where our yard's going to start. Now, I've done a bit of research in between the different episodes, and this isn't realistic, but there's a big enough space here to create a, create a depot. So, we'll make some land there. And at first we're not going to have that many trains running, so I don't want to overcomplicate things and put too much on here. Now, uh, it's five length here, so this is just for making it look nice, because if, if you've got a train which is five in length, you don't want to have, you know, a single. You know, it's very unrealistic just to have a, a single depot. The depots at the back, so the ones I've just placed here, those for there don't actually make any difference. It's just, if you want to call it eye candy, uh, just for display purposes only. So what we're going to have then, we're going to have trains coming in and trains going out. And we want like a bit of a area here for trains to wait between going in and out and starting their, starting their journey. So what we will need to do first is figure out a way to move the trains across and how many platforms we're going to have. I'm thinking we'll have four or five. Oops, that's definitely the wrong one. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five. And that's, um, and that's um, enough there for five. Just need to connect them all up nicely. So we need the trains coming in that they've got enough capacity to go to all. And we need a long enough length for the station and then a signal. I don't know why I'm putting these here. You can just create the station over it. I'm just trying to think whilst I'm doing it. So I'll need a path signal because we'll have multiple trains in this area. As they're coming and going. So we need a path signal here. Would have been handy if that was one length longer. But I guess a That. 
trying to do is trying to create it's still four. I still have length four, so what I'm trying to do here is to create a kind of a, a gap. That's long enough. That's one, two, three, four. So that's long enough for a train to be waiting there and not blocking others. Um, so that's that's good. That can make oops. Gone into that tool again. So I think what we should do is give that the option of going there. I don't want to do a crossover there because I never really seem to like crossovers, so I think that looks reasonably okay. In that sense where people are moving around so that can get into there, they can all get across into there. And then from there it, the people have got, or the trains have got access to go in any, any direction they would choose. So that looks okay, so let's create some Actually, we'll probably want buffers out here as well. So we'll have what type of station we're going to have. Let's have a think. We might want some kind, some kind of rustic platform. You know, there's not going to be a platform in the middle. So we could create some sheds for them to stay in. That might work quite nicely. Don't model the yards. So we'll see if our DWE looks any good. I can't remember with the. Maybe I need to look in between again. For the right option that I've got here. Again, I've got lots of GRFs installed. I just need to remember which ones I'm looking at. Because there was some way it was very kind of rustic, just like grass. I will find it. So apologies. Maybe fast forward, fast forward this bit. Maybe we'll just go for these for now. That's non track. Okay, so let's go for this one. So we've got five, a five. We're gonna go like that. So there's our. There's our station. Let's try and make it look. And maybe a little bit nicer with some of the single pieces of don't know if that makes it more realistic or not or may as I said before I'm probably not the best person with eye candy style You've got these ones here. Oh, I think these are the ones I was thinking of. Yeah, these are the ones I was thinking of. More of a more like a rustic sort of feel with a buffer at the end. Yeah, let's do that because that might look a bit better. Then we'll have empty platform and then we want the one with the kind of grass finishing transition. Between kind of the 
the grey bits to the to the grass at the end where the uh, where the signals are. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. So I think we've got a depot. We've got our stations. I think let's give it a go, and we are going to get our first set of trains going. I was thinking at Ellscott, so we're going to create a service here from Wimbledon, um, let's just call it Depot, here, I'm not going to load anyone there, I'm going to go all that way up to Paddington and then back down. We'll probably change the service in the future, but um, let's get it started. So let's go down here, get some new vehicles, and let's pick... something suitable for this job. So we have this tube, third rail, so let's buy that one. And we are, and I don't think there's any other tubes on here. So we need to find the suitable carriages for that one. Again, I'm just double checking that there's not other so we've got quite a lot of British packs added on here. So none are there at the minute. That's fine. Let's find the right passenger carriage. Use the extra carriages for these. The tube carriage. Okay. So let's just expand that to be length five. It'll be quite long. How many, how many people does that? It's 220 passengers, which isn't a lot, but it's five in length. Okay, so here we go, our first train order. So we're gonna ask it to go to uh, the depot. Definitely not full load. I don't know why I press control there. And it will also end up going there and after that it'll go back to the depot and we want it to service at the depot every time it's there and we want to unload all unload all and we want to make sure that there is no loading as well unload and leave out unload and leave empty is the same okay so after the Wimbledon Depot, we are going to Wimbledon. So we'll do that twice. We're then gonna go to Fulham. And I'm not gonna put Putney in yet, I'm just gonna leave that there as maybe a suggestion. Gonna go to Owls Court twice. And we're gonna go to Paddington. Maybe what we're gonna have to do is to make sure it doesn't get there and then get lost, because it can't go up to Paddington. We're gonna create a small waypoint in the space that we've got there. That's a speed reduction sign. Anything that looks semi okay. Ball with hedge. Yeah. That'll do for me. Um what do we call them? Ells Court Waypoint. They will just name. We'll just leave them as they are. So from Fulham to Ells Court, we want to go via Ells Court Waypoint there, and then from Paddington. Before we get to Ells Court again, we're going to go there. Okay. Probably need to come up with some more imaginative names for these waypoints, but that's enough for now. And we've got our timetable. We're going to. Leave it to automate for now um, and have some nice separation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get one going and let it watch it, follow it, make sure it goes well and then we'll edit the timetable. Okay. So there we go. So we can unpause and watch it on its merry, merry little way.
So whilst that is happening, we'll leave that window up over here with a reasonable size. We can have a look at the timetable. So we can keep, keep an eye on that as it's running. So whilst that's going, rather than just wasting time, we can maybe plan out what we're going to do next. So next, from Ells Court, we probably want to come down to Richmond to create a little spare out this way. Maybe should use the planning tracks or whatever, but that's fine, we can do it this way around. Coming to Richmond, that's kind of again a, a similar way that the district line happens. So let's start planning that as that train's going. And we've got a bit of space here behind this um, hotel to create a station. Oh, that's, uh, that hotel's going to be a little bit of a problem in so we can't go down too far. That looks as though it's already up a level because of that. So I'm going to delete that, try and help us. Down. The town will slowly build it way back up again, so um, no, envir environmentalists and people like that, don't worry, it will be, um, will build itself back up again. So what's that? That's four, we've got five there. Move that out of the way so you can see. So that's good, so the, the tube train went as expected. Need to make those stations look a little bit nicer. Two and five. That look a bit smaller. Two and five. Place that there. That's going to capture quite a lot of the town when it grows and expands. That's going to be quite good. Okay. So then from there. We can, we can have quite a large tunnel from that. Because we're at the same level, aren't we? So I think we should use that opportunity then to tunnel under here. Oh look, we're going up a level again here on the rivers. And for now, let's just do it like that. Can always tunnel under extra things in the future. That bridge, we actually wanted to keep that bridge, didn't we? What was the bridge? The viaduct. Maybe I'll put the bridges in, make them look nicer through the transparency. And for now we'll just finish it off like this. Now uh, Richmond was supposed to be a kind of a dead end again, a kind of a terminus station. So we haven't given it the option for people to reverse round. So we probably need to do that. So we're going to take this back. You. It's either, hang on a second before I do that, it's either that or we bring them out and we go to Kingston upon Thames and then we, and then we, we put this, kind of terminate the service there, which isn't like the district line but Definitely what I didn't want to do. Let me bring that height back up again. So we could either do that and bring it to Kingston upon Thames and have a bit of a terminus there. I think we might as well. It'll help us build it around there. 
to find a good place to put a station. So I think on this side, where we're going to come out, if I tunnel there, so just behind this big skyscraper thing, is that going to be a good place for a station? Ah, so that's ah, so it's already done a full service and it's off on its travels again, so that's good. I'm trying to think of where that's gonna be. See if we could get it to be somewhere there. That's gonna be better, isn't it, for catchment. I guess we could put it here and then have some kind of stretch kind of spread station if you want to call it that. I think maybe let's do that. I think that'll be easier to just go a tunnel straight under. And it will build up around us. So let's do that. And again, we need to remember that we are going to have nowhere else to go from down here is they at the minute nothing local so I think we're gonna terminate the services here or would it just be better to have it terminating like here I think that's what we're gonna end up doing we'll have it terminating here do we want to bring it up to land height don't think so. So let's let's put that back. Let's um, cancel our plans for that one. And we are. So I guess I can take it back. Okay. Yeah. Let's create a five. Two and five is that. I thought that one required. Oops. So we're putting that there. We need to have a. Well, I don't think you need to have a have a signal there, but I like it because it's well. One, it's there because it looks like it should be because there isn't a. Don't need technically need one. The the end of the platforms have one, but it also stops if there's you know if you've accidentally um, building when trains are moving. It will it will prevent crashes. I've found a couple of times where um, crashes have happened. Now have I put the I put it in the wrong yeah I've put it in the wrong place haven't I? And get rid of that line. Let's see now, because it's the terminus, we're going to go three. Just to be different. So they're going to go across there. In that sort of configuration. And then we need to go down one. tunnel through to where was it Richmond. Okay, let's put some signals. So we go, I think we've got the new got that new part of the line signal down to there with the need signals. That way. Cool. Okay. So we've expanded it there. What we might then want to do is that this service here, because I don't want to create another depot down here. Maybe we'll just edit it because it's getting close to the finish. Is the go from Wimbledon to Paddington down to Kings upon Thames, back up to Paddington and down back. I think that's going to. That'd be a nice way of doing it. So let's 
Let's take our time to, uh, not our timetable, our route orders. So we get to Paddington. And then we want to go to Earl's Court, but we want to, when we come to Earl's Court, we want to go this side of Earl's Court, don't we? We don't want to go on the wrong side. But I can't put a, you can't put a waypoint on the, on a diagonal. It needs to be on a flat piece. So I could either put that in at the station here. Would that be how you want to do it? It's either the RX make that slightly longer like that. Let's, let's do it that way. Now I can put a a waypoint let's use that one so go to follow on Ellscott with Ellscott Paddington so let's do Paddington again and after Paddington, I'm going to go that way, point to Earl's Court, to Richmond, to King's Times, to Richmond, to Earl's Court, to Paddington. And from Paddington that way, around that way. Yep. It's probably a bit more complex than I was expecting. But we've got that, so... Let's see if the train takes it on on its next journey, see how that works out, and then we can probably finish it, finish this um, this episode there. So I think, um, hopefully to summarise the episode, we've I figured out why the channels didn't work. I'm just going to share that with you. I've expanded the line and the network out to Richmond and then down to Kingston upon Thames. We've got a train running. Is the train actually making some money? It's making a decent amount of money, 18,000. Uh, how are we doing for passengers? Now these are the ones that have uh, cargo distribution. So Ells Court, where do people want to go? So most people want to go via Fulham down because we've only just picked up at Ells Court. So we're going to go that through that way. Let's double check Wimbledon Depot as the orders to unload and leave, leave empty. Need to remember actually at that Wimbledon is need to unload all and leave empty. There's no point leaving that Wimbledon for people to sit in there for ages. So yes, I want it to be empty when it leaves Wimbledon to go to the depot. Yes, that's why it's uh, turned that way and it's gone that way, so that's good. So the timetable should be filling itself out. I'm not staying for, for zero days. So maybe in, next, um, maybe in the next episode we look at timetabling. And getting some of the, or getting more trains running on this, um, on this line. We might also want to plan out where we're going to expand from here. So I think the idea was that we're going to go from Ellscourt kind of through Westminster, around River Thames, through the City of London, and out towards, I don't know, sort of this sort of area here, through Barking, Dagenham, and out. 
that might be. I don't know if that's going to be for the next episode or the episode after that. I think that's where we want to expand it. And then afterwards, it'll be nice to get some you know, non-metro services, sort of um, more commuter services out in towards this area of Slough, Henley on Thames, Reading, and maybe get some high, high speed, long distance services going. You know, maybe out from Paddington down the Great Western Railway sort of line, Reading, Swindon, that sort of, that sort of, um, that sort of idea. Any of these, so these aren't growing yet. We have only just started. So it'll be nice when these get uh, to be quite large cities and towns. And maybe we put some uh, connecting tram services and things between that. So there we go. Then I think um, I think we've got this service running, which looks like it's working well. In the next episode, we'll do a bit more advanced timetabling, set up the timetable a bit more, and from there we can get more more services running. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next time for for another episode of Open TTD. Okay, bye all.